Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson could be negotiating with two promotions, one of them being Impact Wrestling. Vince Russo rumors are flying that he's back with Impact Wrestling. Diona Perrazzo makes her debut. The Slammiversary main event is set. And an interview with Gut Check winner, the Suplex Shogun, Jackson Stone. All this and more coming up next on Shooting Up North with Lewis Carlin right here on the Impact Lounge. Well, 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 what do we have here? Ladies and gentlemen, this is Super like Shogun Jackson Stone. You are listening in to Shooting Up North. And keep on drinking that lemonade, keep on suplexing those foes, and we'll be right with you. Hey folks, Lewis Carlin here. Welcome to Shooting Up North. Uh, Before we get started, I just want to say I am on social media. I am on Twitter and I'm on Instagram. You could follow me on Twitter at Shooting Up North and you could follow me on Instagram at Shooting Up North Podcast. So that's Twitter at Shooting Up North and Instagram at Shooting Up North Podcast. And if you're a first time listener here to the Impact Lounge and you're not a subscriber, please feel free to hit that subscribe button impact lounge also all across social media facebook twitter and instagram so go ahead and feel free to give the impact lounge a follow on all social media platforms as well okay so luke gallows carl anderson the rumor is that they are negotiating with two promotions one promotion to be a main promotion and one promotion to be their U.S.-based promotion. So the main promotion, from what I'm reading, is New Japan Pro Wrestling, which makes sense. They, they, they became megastars in New Japan Pro Wrestling. So going back there only makes sense. So that that's, would be their main promotion. But they're also looking for a promotion that uh, they could call uh, home in the U.S. And right now they're negotiating with Impact Wrestling. I've been reading that AEW is not really in the mix. There's no word whether they're in the mix, but there's definitely word that Impact Wrestling is negotiating with Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson, which is fantastic. And this whole thing kind of makes sense because if if they want uh, the main promotion to be New Japan Pro Wrestling, you know, like I said, I understand that. That's their that's their home promotion. They became mega stars there. Uh, but coming back to uh, to the US, it makes more the most sense for them to sign with Impact Wrestling. And here's why. Because AEW, they do their weekly live show. So the travel for Gallows and Anderson to um, to do a weekly New Japan Pro Wrestling, uh, the weekly New Japan Pro Wrestling schedule, and then come back and do the the weekly um, AEW uh, show. In addition to if there's a pay per view, they'll have to fly back as well. Uh, so the traveling would be kind of insane for them. Uh, but when you look at Impact Wrestling, Impact Wrestling, they would have to fly back maybe for one day and um, record record TV shows. You know, do so, do a TV taping. They could tape all their shows on um, all the matches on one day and then fly back to Japan and um, be a part of the New Japan Pro Wrestling shows. Because the New Japan Pro Wrestling shows, they were on hiatus for a bit because of the pandemic. Uh, but their their shows are starting up again uh, on June 15th. So it kind of makes perfect sense. It it makes perfect sense for them to wanna to wanna sign uh, with with Impact Wrestling because it's the U.S. promotion that, that'll give them a bit of a lighter schedule here in in the U.S. So I could definitely see it happening. And um, I know Dave Meltzer is reporting this. So whether you like Dave Meltzer or not, uh, he's usually uh, he's a credible source. He's a credible source. Uh, so so that's what's being announced. And I I like I said I think it's it's um, a perfect. A perfect scenario uh, for for Gallows and Anderson because they're in New Japan, where they want to be, their main promotion, and then come back to the U.S. And then we're gonna get the 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 matches against the North. We're gonna get the matches against uh, Falabon, TJP. We're gonna get the matches against the Rascals. Um, you never know. FTR. They're like I said last week. They're only on a handshake deal. They might. They they've expressed interest in in wrestling Gallows and Anderson. They might 
appear in Impact Wrestling uh, for um, for a few uh, appearances uh, to feud with them. You never know. You never know what's going to happen. So I think this is this is a great uh, great um, scenario situation uh, for Gallows and Anderson, and I I am expecting them to sign with both promotions. Now you might be saying you know to yourself. Uh, that I mentioned that AEW wouldn't be a good fit for them. And you might be thinking, oh, John Moxley does it. John Moxley works for AEW and he, he flies out to Japan for New Japan Pro Wrestling. But John Moxley, it, it's the reverse situation for John Moxley. AEW is his main promotion. And New Japan Pro Wrestling, he works there part-time. Uh, he's not on... He's not on every single show, uh, so he only flies out for like the big pay-per-views. Uh, you won't see him. You won't see him on 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 house shows. So he's only. I, I shouldn't say pay-per-views. Um, he's well, yeah, pay-per-views so for the major shows. He'll fly out for. Uh, but uh, AEW is his quote-unquote home promotion. Uh, with Gallows and Anderson, it'll be flipped. New Japan Pro Wrestling would be his would be their main promotion, and Impact Wrestling would be their U.S. promotion. Uh, so it works out better. I think it works out better for Gallus and Anderson uh, to sign with Impact Wrestling than than it does with AEW. And and like I said, I have a gut feeling it's going to happen. I have a gut feeling it's going to happen. And Impact Wrestling, Impact Wrestling keeps teasing. They're teasing all these uh, talent signings uh, that's coming to Slammiversary, and it's 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 a fun time right now for Impact Wrestling. It's a fun time for Impact Wrestling. They're getting a lot of buzz, a lot of internet buzz, a lot of internet attention. Uh, like for example, Michael Elgin uh, talking on the uh, phone uh, to a Canadian, and says that uh, us Canadians, are, you know, us Canadians were team players. You know, hinting that Team Canada is coming back. Rhino tells Rohit Raju that he has a partner, has a tag team partner, and he's got kids, kind of teasing that Heath Slater is coming in. We all know EC3 is teasing coming back. Last week, they showed uh, Mike Bennett and uh, Maria Canales uh, on the flashback, another little tease there. Even even Taylor Wilde, <laughs> even former knockout Taylor Wilde is, is getting into the... Uh, into the Impact Wrestling talent teasing business uh, by um, teasing on Twitter that that she may be coming back too. Hell, hell, well, why why stop there? Let, let's maybe Earl Hebner will start. Um, we could get a few teases from Earl Hebner that he's coming back, and maybe Shark Boy, maybe Shark Boy will throw out a few <laughs> a few teasers that he's coming back. It seems like everybody's coming back. Everyone's coming to Impact Wrestling on Slammiversary. Uh, like I said, it's a great great time to to be an Impact Wrestling fan. I'm very excited. I just. I just hope, I just hope that the, the ball is not dropped here, and I really hope that uh, they they do deliver big time. I personally think they will. I I, I do believe that they've already have a few people wrapped up already, because I I don't think they would be doing all this this teasing if they didn't have a few wrapped up. I mean. Even Rusev, uh, Rusev got into the Rusev um, tweeted a little tease out as well. Uh, not that tweeted, but he uh, he was on a um, interview show and he kind of teased that um, it could be him as well. So a lot of teasing going on, a lot of teasing going on, and uh, I'm looking forward to Slammiversary. I can't wait to see who shows up. I'm gonna, I'm going to predict as Eric Young, EC3, and Gallows and Anderson. At least those four will be showing up, and uh, we could be seeing more. Um, I love Rhino saying that he's already got a tag team partner and he's He's got kids, so might see Heath Slater. You know, a lot of possibilities, and um, I am so psyched and so excited for a store for the Impact Wrestling fan at Slammiversary because you know we we deserve it, man. We've been loyal fans for so long, and now it looks like Impact Wrestling is finally starting to take shape. They're bringing in top talent, and they're just gonna get bigger and bigger and bigger. And and we deserve this, man. And I just, I can't wait. I can't wait for Slammiversary, and I'm sure everyone listening right now shares that sentiment with me. Can't wait for Slammiversary. It's going to be a fun, fun time watching um, all these all these um, signings showing up. So J- July 18th couldn't get here fast enough for me, man. Couldn't get here fast enough, and I'm, I'm having fun. You know, it's, it's going to be a few weeks of uh, talent teasing, uh, which is just fine. Like I said, I'm excited, man. I can't wait for July 18th. Uh, Vince Russo. There's been rumors going around that Vince Russo is back with Impact Wrestling, and uh, people are basing this rumor, these ru- this rumor, on some of the um, booking decisions that have been made lately 
uh, for Impact Wrestling. And I think that's stupid. I think that's dumb that they're basing it on on booking decisions. Oh, uh, something if, if they see think something is is um, a little quirky. Uh, they go, oh, Vince Russo's back. I, I think it's dumb. Well, Vince Russo actually addre- addressed the rumors because uh, they were running wild for a little bit, and Vince Russo addressed them and he said he's not back with Impact Wrestling. So there you go, rumor squashed. Vince Russo not back with Impact Wrestling, and I know a lot of people don't want him back. They feel that. You know he killed WCW and he's a he's a poison and blah blah blah. But think of it. Let me let me let me explain. Vince Russo is actually very 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 smart. He's very very smart when it comes to professional wrestling. Uh, yes, he's had some bad ideas, but him coming back to Impact Wrestling wouldn't be such a horrible thing. And, and here's why: when he was with the WWE and uh, during the Attitude Attitude Era, and uh, he. He was um, making WWE a, a very, uh, very good product to watch. He wasn't the boss. Vince McMahon was the boss. And Vince Russo had to run ideas past Vince McMahon. And Vince McMahon had to give him a thumbs up and a thumbs down, basically. Uh, so, But when he was in WCW, uh, he made all the decisions. He didn't have to... He didn't have to um, run his decisions past anybody he was in charge he made all the booking decisions and that was that see when you had Vince McMahon Vince McMahon was there to say no that's not a good idea we're not going to do that uh see so a similar situation would be uh, if he was back with Impact Wrestling he would have to run his ideas past Scott Demore and Don Callis and they would give him the thumbs up or thumbs down basically so it's not such a horrible idea to have Vince Russo back as long as Vince Russo is not you know the decision maker. If as long as he has, you know, he comes up with ideas and he has to run them past somebody, then 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 Vince Russo is is a um, is is a legitimate force to have in your in your promotion. Um, but um, but and I'll leave it at that. I'll leave it at that. And uh, if let me know what you think on that. Uh, that's 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 my opinion on on Vince Russo. Diona Perrazzo made her debut last week on Impact Wrestling, and. It was exactly the way I envisioned it. They brought her in because well, she's not officially signed. She's she's working on a, a per appearance basis. Uh, they brought her in and they made her go right after Jordan Grace, exactly as I envisioned. And I think it's a smart move because because she's not signed, as I said, and they don't have three years to to build her up. So treat her like a megastar, have her come in immediately and go right after Jordan Grace. Exactly like I envisioned. It's exactly like I said on the, on the last podcast. On, on, uh, not the last podcast, but um, on a past podcast. And I, I, I absolutely loved it. The only thing that I think I would have done differently is I wouldn't have announced Diona Perrazzo at all and just make it a total surprise just make it a complete surprise uh kind of like a um you know with all the teasing that's going on you know just give us a little taste on what what to expect at Slammiversary uh so I I would have kept it quiet and after that match Jordan Grace beats Ty Valkyrie I would have just um had her music start to play and then Josh Matthews could have gone, oh my god it's Diona Perrazzo what is she doing here and then Perrazzo would come out and do the armbar thing and, and uh, take out Jordan Grace as she did that, that's the only thing I would have done differently otherwise I think it's it's perfect situation absolutely loved it and I can't wait I'm sure we're going to see Diona Perrazzo against Jordan Grace at Slammiversary it's Great, great debut for Perrazzo. So happy to see her in Impact Wrestling, and I do hope that they do sign her uh, to a long-term contract. Now, speaking of Diona Perrazzo, uh, little something just a little weird that I think they let's talk Kimberly. Kimberly, they did a, a promo with Kimberly. Uh, it was on, uh, I think it was Twitter or social media, where she was talking about Diona Perrazzo coming and how uh, she's not happy about Diona Perrazzo. She basically cut a promo on Diona Perrazzo. Uh, so I, I initially thought they're going to have Kimberly feud with with Diona Perrazzo, uh, and I'm thinking, why is Kimberly? Cutting a promo on Diona Perrazzo when she was just taken out by uh, Jessica Havoc and Nevaeh a week earlier. Has she forgotten about that? Is that feud over? So I just thought it was a little weird that she was going after Diona Perrazzo. And I thought Diona Perrazzo was going to make her debut uh, going after Kimberly or confronting Kimberly. But she didn't. She confronted Jordan Grace. So I was a little confused with the, the Kimberly promo on Diona Perrazzo. Uh, and it appears the feud between... Kimberly 
uh, Jessica Havoc and Nevaeh is over because they're now teasing a feud between Jessica Havoc, Nevaeh against Tasha Steeles and Kara Hogan. So I'm thinking, is Kimberly just about done with Impact Wrestling? I know she's not. She hasn't signed a contract with them, and she also was working on a per appearance basis. But is she basically done now with Impact Wrestling? Are we going to see a match against Deanna Perrazzo? Maybe Deanna Perrazzo will have one match before some anniversary. It'll be against Kimberly. Uh, so it's just a little little confused as to the direction that they're going there. But uh, but nonetheless, nonetheless, I, I am really looking forward to Havoc and Nevaeh against Tasha Steeles and Kiera Hogan. That could be a very, very fun match. A very, very fun match. I, I love the team of Hogan and uh, Steele. They, they're great chemistry there. Um, they're probably my favorite tag team right now uh, in Impact Wrestling, besides the North, of course. Uh, but absolutely love the team. They, they're doing a great job. And it could be a fun feud um, against Havoc and Nevaeh. All right. So the Slammiversary. The Slammiversary main event is set. Is set. It's going to be... Tessa Blanchard defending against Michael Elgin, Eddie Edwards, Ace Austin, and Trey Miguel. So it's going to be a fatal five-way match uh, at at Slammiversary. And I don't know, you know, it's it should be a good match, but the the whole number one contenders tournament I think was um, was just just ridiculous in my opinion just ridiculous um too many too many things went on there and it uh it just i just i i didn't i didn't care for the matches were great i just didn't care how i didn't care how it was um was booked i guess you could say i guess maybe that's you know some of the booking there people thinking vince russo's back you know i i could see that but uh, i just i just didn't like how it was booked uh for example you know, trey miguel getting taken out and zachary once taking his spot um you, you the whole thing is like who who attacked trey miguel they were they were playing that out you know who attacked trey miguel and you know they were hinting you know towards uh, zachary Wentz, the North came in, and they were trying to, you know, put the blame on Zachary Wentz. Uh, they mentioned Ace Austin possibly, uh, but I think I think Des had an alibi for Ace Austin. Uh, so it was, it was, it was all eyes were pointing at pointing at Zachary Wentz. Uh, but you know, you kind of said, okay, you kind of forget about, you know, who attacked Trey Miguel because Trey Miguel has been rewarded with uh, by being put into this uh, main event. So instead of winning. The number one contenders tournament. He was because he was, he was uh, attacked. You know, so instead of being upset that he's not the number one contender, you know, the fans are like, oh, okay, he's not the number one contender, but he's get, he's getting a shot for the for the Impact World Title anyway. So that kind of takes away, you know, a little bit of the uh, I guess you could say the the pity people might have for Trey Miguel for for um, missing his opportunity because. Even though he missed his opportunity to become the number one contender, he's getting the opportunity to win the Impact Wrestling World title anyway. So I, you don't really feel as bad for Trey Miguel anymore. Um, unless, of course, during Slammiversary, unless, of course, during Slammiversary, he gets attacked again and Zachary Wentz takes his spot. And um, then, then you know what Zachary Wentz. Uh, unless... Zachary, or maybe Dez. Maybe it was Zachary Wentz and Dez. Maybe they both are were jealous that he was in the, in the number one contenders tournament, and they both attacked him. I, I, I definitely think it's one of the rascals. Uh, but I don't know if they're gonna be if if we're gonna see this uh, storyline be played out, or if the storyline is has ended, or if we're gonna see a resurgence of the storyline at some anniversary where, as I said, Trey Miguel gets attacked again and somebody takes his spot uh, in the main event. So. And I personally, I just, I just wanted Michael Elgin. I, well, Michael Elgin. I, as I said in past uh, podcasts, that I, I really felt that somehow Michael Elgin was going to end up the number one contender and become the Impact Wrestling World's Heavyweight Champion. And as you can see, he's back in the match, and he's definitely going to win. Uh, in my opinion, I I think I shouldn't say definitely, but in my opinion, I think he's going to win the match and be the new Impact Wrestling World Champion. But I can say for sure, definitely, that Tessa Blanchard will not leave that match as the Impact Wrestling World Champion. That I could definitely say. That I could definitely say. I don't see I don't see Trey Miguel winning the title. Um, 
it's going to be Michael Elgin. I think Michael Elgin is uh, is going to be the the new Impact Wrestling World Champion when all is said and done. Okay, what else can we discuss? Rohit Raju. Let's talk about Rohit Raju for a second because I, I I know I mentioned it a little earlier before. He had a little segment with Rhino, and he kind of got in Rhino's face, and they went back and forth. Rhino ran him down, and uh, Rohit Raju ended up attacking Rhino. I absolutely love this. It showed the fire. Um, and Rohit Raju, I, I I love Rohit Raju. That's there's no secret. I love the character, and the Desi Hitman. He's actually got new shirts out now. The Desi Hitman shirts. It's on Pro Wrestling Tees. Uh, you're welcome, Rohit Raju, for the for the for the plug for the t-shirt plug. But um, I I love this. I next week it's actually it's been booked. Uh, Rohit Raju going one on one with Rhino. And I just I hope Rohit Raju gets the victory here. I hope it's not a squash match. My fingers are crossed that Rohit Raju gets the big win here. Big fan of Rohit Raju. He could definitely be a major star if he's given the opportunity. And uh, I think he's starting to get that opportunity now. And we'll see. I'm gonna be. This is this is the match I'm gonna be watching. This is, I should say, this is the match that I have the most interest in watching next week. Uh, Rohit Raju against Rhino, because I, I want Rohit Raju to win this match so desperately, so badly. So I got my fingers crossed that Rohit Raju is going to come out on top. And, uh, you know, let's talk about something that I, I, I kind of noticed something on, on, um, where's my, Don Callis. Don Callis on Aftershock this week. Actually, he's he's he started insulting Scott Demore. You know, he's um he he says sometimes Scott Demore thinks Impact Wrestling is is, is the Scott Demore show, uh, and he he was actually asked about the the number one contenders. Not, I'm sorry, the the Slammiversary main event, um, and uh, he gave his answer, and he was insulting Scott Demore. Uh, as well, and uh, he says he felt Ace Austin uh, shouldn't be punished. Ace Austin won the number one contenders tournament, and if uh, Tessa Blanchard isn't there to defend it, that uh, that Ace Austin should be named the Impact Wrestling World Champion. He was kind of, he was, you know, and I know in the beginning of of Impact Wrestling, you kind of saw Scott Demore and Don Callis trying to hash out what they're going to do. So Don Callis kind of hinting, saying that he's he wanted Ace Austin as the world champion, uh, but uh, but Scott Demore had other plans. So it looks like we might be headed towards a a feud between Scott Demore and Don Callis. Curious to see if Scott Demore responds to this the, to these insults. My favorite, but from Callis saying that Scott Demore, whenever he has a microphone, thinks it's the Scott Demore show. Uh, so so we'll see we'll see where this goes. Do we need a feud between Callis and Demore? No, I, I don't think so. I don't think there's any any interest at all in a, in a, in a Don Callis Scott Demore feud. Uh, but but we'll see. We'll see where this goes. We'll see where this goes. All right. So if you remember, before this whole pandemic um, uh, happened, we had the latest edition of Gut Check, uh, where Impact Wrestling was looking for the next um, the next Impact Wrestling superstar. And the winner of that competition was the Suplex Shogun Jackson Stone. And he won a contract uh, with Impact Wrestling. And I know a number of people are have been thinking, when is Jackson Stone going to make his debut for Impact Wrestling? And that's a great question. And I had the opportunity to speak with Jackson Stone, conducted an interview, and I did ask him that question. And it was a great interview. I really enjoyed talking to him. And without further ado, I'm not going to make you wait any longer. Here is my interview with Impact Wrestling's Jackson Stone. Hello and welcome to the Shooting Up North interview. I am your host, Lewis Carlin, and we are heard right here on the Impact Lounge. And I'm very excited today because I have a guy on the show today that I've wanted for some time. He, he is winner of the most recent gut check competition. He is an Impact Wrestling star. I'm talking about the Suplex Shogun himself, Jackson Stone. Jackson, welcome to the show, man. Well, well, well. What do we have here? <laughs> Yo, thank you so much, man, for having the Suplex Shogun on. And I greatly appreciate that um, that introduction. And it's great to be on. It's great to be, uh, be talking to you, Lewis, man. Uh, I'm excited. What's going on? 
Uh, not too much, man. Not too much. I forgot to mention, you're also uh, one half of the cross-body professional wrestling tag team champions uh, mm-hmm. in the embassy. So I forgot to mention that as well. So I just want to, to get that in there real quick. Yes, yes, yes. Shouts out to my other tag partner, Blake182. We are the cross-body uh, pro wrestling champions, tag team champions. There you go, man. So, so how are you holding up with, with this this whole pandemic? I know I, it seems like the uh, the curve is flattening now, and things are starting to get back to normal. And hopefully, we're going to have some some wrestling. But, but how have you been holding up uh, these these past couple of months? It must have been tough, man. Oh, you know what? Uh, yeah, it was very interesting timing right now. Shogun's doing well, uh, but pretty much it was very interesting timing because you got to understand. Once I got, once I was a, uh, I earned that contract. The moment I got home. It pretty much everything was shut down, so it was like all that excitement. Yeah, and then all of a sudden, you know, you gotta you gotta stay home, but it's okay. I took the opportunity to to really sharpen myself, um, my, you know, not just physically but mentally, and uh, and just get my spirits up even more, you know, because you can either you can either plateau or you try to get better. And for me, I mean, you know, I gotta use this this momentum for something, you know. Oh yeah, man. Now you, you, you. As, as I mentioned, you're the winner of the, the gut check tournament. Uh, so have you actually signed that contract yet? And what, what's the contract status, if I may ask? Uh, the Suplex Shogun definitely he has to sign the contract. Uh, right now, I mean, it's a, it's for three years, but pretty much we are uh, we're, we're just seeing how everything goes for right now. You know, we're uh, we're seeing when, okay. when when things start up. We're seeing when things start up because um, of course with uh, with everything with uh, the situation of COVID. And you yeah. know, audiences it might be a little hard, so I like uh, to just gauge when when my starting point is. But whenever it is, I'm ready for whenever. Honestly, we have a great we have a great locker room. It's a lot of great competition and impact in general. And the Super Shogun Jackson Stone has just been working hard just to get the get to that competition. So honestly, whenever whenever they call, I'll be ready for. Well, I well, I gotta say you're an incredibly talented in-ring performer, and you definitely, definitely earned that contract. And I, I'm, I'm so glad that that uh, you're uh, you're part of the Impact Wrestling roster. I'm a huge oh, Impact man, Wrestling fan. Thank you fan. so much. <laughs> thank you my so pleasure, much. man. My my pleasure, man. My pleasure. And and I, and I know I think you've answered the question, but I know a lot of um uh, my listeners. Uh, the Shooting Up North is an Impact Wrestling um based uh, podcast, and they a lot of people keep asking me, when is Shogun gonna when is Shogun going to make his debut? When is he going to make his debut? Do you think once this pandemic's over that they're finally going to bring you in uh, to to make your um uh, in-ring debut for Impact Wrestling? You know what? When uh, when the time is right, Shogun will strike for sure. And I'm I'm hoping it can be in, in front of multiple eyes, multiple okay. live eyes. So how how would you like to debut? Like if if uh, Scott Demore and and Don Callis said uh, they came up to you and said you know uh, Suplex Shogun, uh, do you have any ideas on how you would like to debut um, for for Impact Wrestling? How how would you like to make your debut? Uh, what do you have any ideas on how you would like uh, to go about that? Oh honestly, Suplex Shogun just wants to. I want to. I want to honestly go in. I want to go in and make the loudest noise possible, and. Sure. Of course, of course, you go for you try to go for whoever you can. You try to go for the, like the biggest competition there. And I mean, there's so many different types of people. I mean, honestly, in the Indies, I've, I've faced off against Michael Elgin. So if I mean, right now, he right now he's chasing, he's chasing for that for that championship. And Shogun, Shogun is nothing less more than a championship chaser. So for me, if if I have to cross paths with Mike Elgin, that's one thing I would love to do. Another thing is with Ace Austin. Ace is a talented athlete, amazing athlete. Shogun would love to test his skills against him. Same thing for Eddie Edwards. Eddie Edwards has been around for years, and he is the cornerstone of Impact Wrestling for a reason. The Super Shogun, he he definitely wants to test himself against a guy like that. Same thing for Fala and all those other. Oh, that would be the. Yeah, I mean, I mean, you mentioned the match with Michael Elgin. I um, that was uh, XICW, the Proving Ground. Uh, that was a, a oh, I'm sorry, I think that was the 19th anniversary show, I believe. I'm sorry. Um, that uh, that was a tremendous match. That was an absolute tremendous match, and I wanted you to win that match so freaking badly, man. When you kept picking up that shoulder, you weren't, uh, you were, you were, you were, but I, I would say, come on, Jackson, come on. But uh, I hope, I really hope you guys cross paths again in uh, in Impact Wrestling. 
Most definitely. And you know what? Yeah, if you can, uh, to all the audience, if you can, please check out that match. That match is something that, even though Shogun lost, a loss is still a learning. And uh, Shogun wants you to check out that match on his YouTube if you get a chance. It's a very, it's a hard-fought match. Absolutely, man. Highly, highly recommend it. We're going to talk about some of your um, some of your other opponents uh, later on in, uh, in the podcast. Now, I had a um, I had a an idea that I that I uh, mentioned on a uh, previous podcast on, on how they, they could bring you in. And since I got you on here now, I'm going to run it past you, and you can let me know what you think. Go ahead, uh, let me get you. Sure. With uh, well, with all the releases, the WWE releases, uh, one of them was Kurt Angle. I have the idea of bringing Kurt Angle in as like a mentor manager to you in Impact Wrestling. Uh, what what would your thoughts be on something like that? Ooh, it's super like Shogun. <laughs> Honestly, for me, Shogun, I, I've I've always been. Uh, attracted to Kurt Angle and Taz as my main I, um, uh, ways of learning from suplexing. And so if I, I mean, to be under Kurt Angle and to learn under Kurt, Kurt Angle, I mean, that would boost me tremendously in my mental game. So, but, I mean, however, however it is to come through, however I am to, to come in, I'm throwing somebody. I don't know who. Uh. I don't know who. But however it is, Shogun's going to be throwing somebody. So, yeah, so someone's definitely getting suplexed for, sh- for sure, man, once, once you come in, man. Oh, yeah. Oh, let's – yeah, let's – we'll quarantine we'll pull Quarantino, uh, T- Tarantino. Suplex will happen. We just don't know how the beginning's <laughs> going to start. <laughs> so, what about Rhino? What about Rhino? Rhino would be a, would be a, oh, yeah. a tremendous opponent for you. Most definitely, yeah, and Rhino. Rhino as well, a guy who's been around not just not just an impact but ECW, WWE, everywhere. He's been all around the world. This man has faced off against honestly the greatest and has gored the greatest. So for me to go against that, my pounce against his gore, uh, I mean that would be a, a, a great battle. Man, and 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 I know that they're doing a lot of uh, teasing right now. Um, Impact Wrestling for Slammiversary, a lot, a lot of talent mm-hmm. uh, may or might not be coming. Is there somebody that uh, maybe an EC3 or Eric Young or a Gallows and Anderson, somebody that you're looking at that you would like to step in the ring with that you hope that they sign? Mm, you know, uh, a while ago the Suplex Shogun before before I was I even became Shogun, I went to the EC3 uh, training. Uh, training camp. It was a small one, uh, like kind of like something that was like um, the school I was I went to. He was in town, and uh, they kind of just had like surprise guests, and he was there. It was great to get so much knowledge from him, and that was right when he was at the top of Impact. You know, like that that was, that was the crazy thing. It was right when he was at the top of Impact, right before I became who I am. So, uh, and I learned so much from that. So honestly, I would love love to go against him. Uh, but also, I mean, Gallows is always a, a hard-hitting individual, and that's somebody I would love to, I, 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 to suplex him. Or <laughs> will be crazy, <laughs> <Absolutely. laughs> I mean, you know, to go one toe, toe to toe with him, a person who's been all around Japan. I mean, uh, uh, stomping with the true kaiju's. Oh yeah, I would love to go against Gallows. And another guy that I just popped into my head. I know he's uh, one half of the the tag team champions, but you against Josh Alexander's would be an absolutely crazy, <laughs> crazy, incredible, amazing match, man. <laughs> I appreciate that. You know what? I, I do feel I, the one thing I appreciate about Josh is that he has a very calming smile, and I know behind that smile he has a lot of uh, of, of rage to throw out at people. I see that in all the matches that he has an impact. I love it, man. Like the match he had against Marafuji. Oh my gosh, man! It's just um. It is uh, so many different types of uh, so many different types of uh, scenarios. I can already see how, how how this match can go with us, but it's gonna be it will be hard hitting for sure either way. And um, I don't, I, I'm I'm excited. Oh man, you get Shogun, you get Shogun pumped up even more now. Yeah, no, there you, you know, go. He's called yeah, Walking Weapon for a reason. <laughs> you know. Oh, absolutely. I, I've I've uh, I've met him many times, and uh, he's he's. he's Outside the ring is a very, very, very uh, pleasant person to be around, but in the ring he's a completely different individual, man. Yes. Uh, but but I, I I think he'd get suplexed a lot by uh, the the suplex <laughs> Shogun if if you guys cross paths. And don't sleep on Ethan too as well. Ethan Page. Oh yeah. Another individual. When Shogun was in Ohio, uh, wrestling a lot around Ohio. Ethan Page was always in 
in Ohio as well, in the Cleveland area, just killing it all the time. So that's somebody I've always wanted to go against as well. Well, it's gonna happen, man. It's gonna happen. Uh, mm-hmm. Definitely. Uh, I hope. I uh, hope. Uh, hope they bring in by by Slammiversary, man. That that'll be that'll be fantastic, man. <laughs> um, now, Impact Wrestling is on a huge upswing right now. You know, I I know they've gone through a tough time, but they're on a huge upswing right now. But there are still fans out there that are saying that you know Impact Wrestling uh, is a sinking ship, or they got six months left. What what do you say to those those? I think it's ridiculous, but what what do you say to people that that um, still post that on social media that it's that Impact's a sinking ship? Man, just sit and watch. Honestly, they just yeah. have to sit and watch. I'm sure that those are the same people who've been saying it for years. And you see that impact, no, like I know. said, impact is still here and still pumping strong, and it's only getting better. Like, that's the best part. There's mm-hmm. so much great talent on that roster. Man, like, lots of that talent I saw the moment I was getting in, they were getting signed, and uh, they were on their way to getting signed. So it's just great to see them like uh, just tra- trans- uh, transition into something even better. And again, yeah. Shogun can't wait to experience that firsthand. And to experience what they have to bring firsthand in the ring. All right, man. There you go, man. Awesome. Uh, so tell me about Gut Check, uh, the Gut Check Hunt. But tell me about that, that experience. How did you get chosen for that, and what was it like being a part of it, man? <laughs> you know, that, that whole process was uh, – it was a grueling process physically, mentally. But uh, the, the whole thing was – it was, of course, rewarding. And the, it was a process, I would say, it lasted for about – five, six months. And essentially it started with uh, 20 plus people trying out. We had a match and then we had to, uh, we had to film a promo and it was from, it was from Marifuji as well. And all that talent, all that talent, like all 20 people were just great talents. Like they were come out from all over the East coast, the South, South side, like the South side, the West side, every, they were coming from all over. And uh, honestly, like, to be selected out of that bunch because it was 20 of us, 20 plus, and they selected seven or eight, like about seven. And for me to be one of those, like one of those seven that, that was selected, I was honestly already like, oh, okay, you know, like I will own something like that's step one, yep. you know, and the whole process, when you get into gut check, when you got, when we got to filming and, and even honestly, when the cameras were off, it was constant training, constant hammering. Like it was just, uh, like to have Johnny Bravo as one of the trainers, uh, it was it was man, it was uh, him him in your face all the time, correcting you on just on, on just the small particular things that can make a big difference in the match. You know what I mean? Like it's it's so much yeah. that uh, that that man threw at us that we had to be ready for. You know, and it, that, it, that's it was great. He's pretty intense. I mean, I know he plays a little. He plays a goofy character on uh, Impact Wrestling, but during that that gut check, he he was he was pretty intense, man. Um, I, I forget who it was, but somebody was getting up the wrong way, and he really just laid into to, to that wrestler. I, I I can't remember which wrestler it was, but he was he was. I think he was getting up left when he should be getting up right, or vice versa. Uh, but um, yeah, do you remember yeah. that? Do you remember that? That was, but he's pretty damn intense, man. Yeah. Uh, so you know, I mean, like, don't don't get don't get it twisted. You know, like you said, he is very funny on television, but that man takes wrestling very seriously, as you should. Absolutely, man. Uh, so right before Scott Demore announced the winner, yeah, I want to talk about this for a bit. You looked extremely nervous, and I hope you don't mind me saying so. You looked like <laughs> you were gonna throw up. <laughs> you look like you were. You look like you were about to throw up right before he uh, announced the winner. <laughs> and, then, and, then, and then, and then, when he announced the winner, you just you you broke down and crying. So oh, tell me man, all yeah. the emotions, the emotions before you you before he announced the winner, and the emotions after he announced uh, that you were the winner. Oh man, like the, you ever like you ever you ever get your report card or or a test beforehand. And the teacher, she's like handing out the papers, and she hands like your your paper, and it's upside down. And you're like, wait, why she do it like that? And then, yeah. And then, and then you flip it <laughs> over, and then you're like, oh my gosh, I passed. That's how I felt. Like it, it was like, but you had those knots in your stomach, those all those knots, and you know, you started thinking like, honestly, it was seconds before he started. He started. Um, he called us to uh, to to film when he like to make his selection. Before that, I was thinking about I was running back my entire career. 
like I was running back from the moment I stepped into the ring and, uh, when I was in Mega Championship Wrestling in, in Illyria. The moment I had my first match, you know, against Ben Boone. The moment I had, like, uh, the, I made uh, the, my Shogun match, or Shogun debut. All my matches against, you know, uh, the likes of Bill Collier, Shane Taylor, Eric Ryan, all the all all these great wrestlers who helped me, who helped me build even more, you know, and it is all that man, just all to this moment, you know, it's just a lot of blood, sweat, legit tears, you know, of course that's yeah. the song, and oh, yeah. yeah, all of that man into one, and not to mention, you know, I've learned, you know, just the biggest thing was I was thinking about everybody who really doubted me and. Honestly, after all of that, the moment, like, honestly, the biggest thing I took out of that, I, it was for me to prove myself right, you know, to prove myself that I deserve to be there. And, you know, winning it, it just, winning it really proved myself even more. But I have a lot more to prove for sure. But it's just to get yeah. to that point. And against an uh, athlete like Tyler Turvin, like Turvin's no pushover. Let me say that to the, like, to the office right now. Tyler Turvin's a class athlete. So, you know, for me to get that contract, it was, uh, again, all of that, man, just came out. And um, I don't know. It was, a, it was a very emotional moment for sure. And you have none. It was one of those things you have nothing else left to do but to cry. Absolutely, man. Well, it was absolutely well-deserved, man. And that was a – you mentioned Tyler Turver. That was a tremendous match uh, that you had with Tyler Turver uh, prior to them announcing the winner. I actually Thanks. had Tyler Turver on. Uh, my pleasure, man. My pleasure, man. You're welcome. I actually had Tyler Tover on a couple of weeks ago, and uh, he had nothing but great praise for you, man. He had nothing but great praise for you. Uh, yeah. So I, I know you praise him a little bit, but what are, what are your thoughts on on Tyler Tover? And do you think we might see him in in Impact Wrestling? Man, he has. He definitely has the makings of an Impact star. He has the making of a of an international star for sure. Like Tyler Tyler Tover, ladies and gentlemen, is like not just a class athlete. He's just a top performer. You know, and like through that whole competition, it was one of those things where we just kept on. You know, we didn't necessarily uh, we had a match uh, during the gut check competition, um, like a little practice match. But other than that, we didn't really bump into each other. But we always noticed each other. And one thing I always appreciated about him, he always brought like that positive attitude toward like to the whole crew. You know, he always he always brought like that like that like let's get this going attitude and. And again, like just you, you see that in, in his work. Again, like the like he he learned from Cody Daner and and all these other guys. Like he's very knowledgeable inside the ring and out. So I mean, the, again, not you won't see the last of him at all for sure. All right, man. And question that's just just been bugging me since it happened. They they've never announced who did it, but do you are you allowed? Do you know who took the picture of Tony Gunn in front of the ring? Are you, a, are, are you allowed to reveal that or is that still have to remain a secret shogun has no idea who took that picture okay and, <laughs> and you know what i have no problem with saying he has no idea because shogun wouldn't do such a thing <laughs> okay there you go. no it's just curious because i no no it's uh, all good Okay. No, because when I, when I spoke to Turo, I asked him the same question. He had he said, "I have no idea." So I, <laughs> I it remains it remains a secret. It remains a secret, man. I feel, uh, I feel, like, so, I feel like a lot of everybody is gonna say plead the fifth on that one, but for me, I'm just gonna say I don't know. <laughs> okay, there you go. Fair <laughs> enough, man. Fair enough. So, so how did it all start for you? So, wh- when did you decide that you wanted to become a professional wrestler? You know, it was actually uh, ooh, it was uh, I want to say after I got done watching Kenta Kobashi and Samoa Joe. Uh, Ring of Honor, and it was like I, I was already in training. I was a week into training, and because I always, I always know I wanted to try it. You know, it's something I wanted to try for sure. But to actually go forth full force and do it, it was a week, probably two weeks into training. Um, and I was watching Kenta Kobashi, one of my favorite Japanese wrestlers against Samoa Joe, one of my favorite uh, wrestlers in general. And he. And they just had an amazing, like, just, like, banger of a match. Just, like, two titans going against each other just nonstop. And um, it just, like, to see the passion, not just from them, but from the crowd. And, you know, to be invested in every single step and every single, like, chop and, you know, suplex. It was just, that was something that, that made me for sure, for sure want to, like, pursue this. Because, you know, I saw the WWE, I saw all the WWE Classics. I saw, you know, Angle and Brock in their Iron Man match in SmackDown. 
in their great WrestleMania match and all this other stuff, Rock and Austin. But it was something about seeing that match that brought uh, that that really lit that fire in me to really, you know, hundred percent commit with conviction. Absolutely, man. I I I I watched that match many 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 times. Uh, yeah. Kobashi versus Show. Absolutely, it's probably probably in my top five favorite matches of all time. Uh, you yes. could just watch it. You could watch the match ten thousand times and never get tired of it. You and really like can. you said, uh, <laughs> the chop the chops that Samoa Joe was taking to the neck. My, I don't know how he was how he's still alive after taking those chops, man. <laughs> yeah, I still don't but, know, man. That that was that was bad. And another guy that uh, Samoa Joe uh, is is. Would you say that he's um, an early influence uh, for the Shogun character? Most definitely, in uh, in his okay. aggression, um, and just like in just how he approached his office for sure. Because uh, one thing I love about Joe, he he implemented a lot of grappling, <laughs> and Shogun is a, is a grapp based wrestler. I, I've wrestled in college and in high school i've done judoka my father was my sensei all throughout and uh, i'm trained for jujitsu so to see samoa joe implement his very hard-hitting style along with the ways he was able to implement different like different ways of choke holds and wrist locks and leg locks uh, at his size i absolutely love that yeah man and um one his, day his magic- one day hopefully <laughs> Oh yeah, no. We we're, we're, we're going to see uh, Samoa Joe versus uh, Jackson Jackson Stone uh, uh soon enough, man. It's it's going to happen, man. It's going to happen. Um So uh so b- besides uh I know you mentioned uh Kobashi and Samoa Joe. Were there anybody else any other wrestlers that um that you would call an early influence? Oh, uh Great Muta, for sure, the Great Muta. Um, oh wow, yeah. Stone Cold, of course. Um of course, The Rock and his personality and just how explosive he was, man. He was so explosive. But also, yeah. uh, also Taz. Like, Taz, especially his ECW run, was just something It was just something to see. You know, just like the suplexes he would give, the way he would give them. Especially yeah. at the angles he would give them. Like, I, I, oh, man, he gave Bam Bam Bigelow a suplex one yeah. time off the ramp. I think he knocked himself yeah. out. But it was such a good yeah, no. place, you know. Also, that's another one, Bam Bam Bigelow. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm I'm originally from I'm originally from Queens, New York, so I I was lucky enough to able to I was able to see the original uh, ECW shows, and oh, um, in uh, Queens, New York, uh, Taz went one on one with Lionheart Chris Jericho. I, I it was early. It was the uh, mid '90s, and uh, t- it was a quick match, like five minutes long. Uh, Taz uh, choked him out uh, pretty quickly, uh, but uh, that's that was. Fa- and I also saw the the um, the the Dudley boy the Dudley boys come together for the first time when uh, Devon and and Bubba Ray. Oh, so no I, I was there for that. <laughs> so awesome. it uh, awesome. just great. You, you mentioned ECW. Great memories for me, man. Great. I, I used to think that's it was awesome. legitimately real, man. Because uh, the way Taz would choke people out, uh, but um, you would have oh, fit. You would. I know if you were around then, you would have fit in uh, very nicely with ECW. Oh, you, you think so? You think Heyman would have uh, would have took took kindly to me? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, he, if, uh, if 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 he's uh, booking the Blue Meanie, he's he would have booked um he would have booked <laughs> the, right. the Suplex Shogun for sure, man. Most definitely. And you know you mentioned you mentioned ECW. That's another person I'm excited just to learn from more of is Tommy Dreamer, because you know of course Dreamer oh, yeah. is with with Impact, and yeah, that was somebody I can't wait to learn more of from for sure. Absolutely, and you got Rob Van Dam there as well, so you got another exactly. uh, another Mich- another Michigan local. There you go, man. There you go. Uh, so so tell me about the origins of of this the Suplex Shogun character. Uh, were you, were you were, did you have that character from the beginning, or when did when did that um, character begin? You know, Shogun the Shogun uh, character. I feel is something that I've always been. I just haven't had a chance to really label it. I feel because I, I've always been this way. This uh, uh, I guess say this type of wanting to engage in 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 throwing people and suplex people and screaming about it i've always i've always enjoyed that um when, when i was again when i was a child my father he started training me in judoka and that he taught me a lot of the ways bushido uh, cold and a lot of ways from like teaching me the ways mushido uh, uh mushido musashi who wrote the book of the five rings and 
a lot of that went into just my just my demeanor and approaching sports in general and and honestly um also just my making in wrestling so when i went to high school i began i be, actually began wrestling i just i took a lot of the things i learned from judoka and Bushido and just kind of implemented that and started becoming more aggressive and and really started learning the ways of greco-roman uh wrestling and freestyle wrestling and and just that morphing that grew and that grew and as i got older i was like you know what i, I mean i definitely want to pursue wrestling so when i started pursuing wrestling it was one of those things where I didn't really know how to, I guess, I had that energy because I had that energy, but I just didn't know how to really let it out in a way that everybody else can understand and and not, and not just understand but believe in. But with my love of Japanese culture and also my love of my African culture, I wanted to be able to, I wanted to, be able to blend those two together. Hence, with, this is where Shogun comes from. So Wu-Tang Clan. Uh, a lot of Afro samurai, of all the okay. anime lovers out there, you know, all that real big influence to uh, to the makings of the Suplex Shogun. Also, if you play Mortal Kombat, Shao Kahn, you know, if you uh, if you watch Dragon Ball Z, a lot of the Dragon Ball Z villains and characters like Broly. So uh, the Hulk also as well. So a lot of those influences kind of played into who I am, and essentially I just use that and showcase that in the ring all right man now you mentioned japan a couple of times is that a place you'd like to eventually uh end up in um and compete in oh most definitely um oh, man and and th- that's been on my eye for a while too yes most definitely japan i would love to go to karaoke hall oh oh my gosh that's actually my my one of my goals is to watch a uh a new Japan pro wrestling show in Corrigan Hall. Now that's 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 one of my goals before I die. I, I have to do that at least once. So, so uh, but, but I know Impact has the the working agreement. I, I think they still have it with 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 uh, with Noah. Uh, so yeah, yes. uh, maybe maybe they'll they'll send you out there uh, and then you could compete for uh, pro wrestling <laughs> Noah. Then. Hey, you know what? Let's call things into existence. Let yes, maybe that can't. You know what? Maybe that can't happen because. That's something I've always wanted to, man, uh, wanted to do. And I follow Pro Wrestling Noah on Instagram and Twitter and just seeing the people out there, seeing the talent out there, I would love to experience that. All right, man. So let's let's actually switch gears. We've been talking about, a lot about uh, um, Impact Wrestling. Uh, let's talk about, uh, if you don't mind, cross-body pro wrestling for a bit. Um now you hold the tag team titles uh, with Blake One Eight Two uh, as the Embassy. So how did the Embassy come together? Um, how did you guys uh, come together for the Embassy? Pretty much uh, with with Blake and I, we we really we we our styles gel in terms of in terms of just in terms of just understanding who we are. Like we we we're one hundred percent comfortable with with who we are as wrestlers. And so we, f- and we feel that, all right, well, we have this new land in Canada. We have this new promotion in Crossbody. Let's work together and make this the best that we can. And cause we already know separately, we can definitely conquer. We separately, we can definitely, we can definitely make do what we can, but we feel together, together. That's something that we can make something even better because Shogun believes in synergy. And honestly, if uh, if I'm there, then I'll make sure my uh, my good friends are coming with me. Blake and I we and I, we've been friends. Uh, I think the moment the moment Shogun moved back to Michigan, and the moment Shogun stepped into XICW, Blake was just one of those guys that just always welcomed Shogun. And so from the moment I started going, I was like, All right, well, wherever uh, Shogun's going, Blake's gonna come with. And also not too far behind with us is our good friend Jamal King. Look out for him. Because also we've been okay. tagging, we've been tagging out in uh, Rockstar Pro Wrestling down in Dayton, Ohio, every now and then. So again, just something that we've been working on, and we all have this understanding that separately we can be fine, but together, together, that's something that's powerful. To have that one, you know, uh, be, when two entities become one, we, we got three. All right, and I'm, I'm sure the Empire is going to want their another shot at their. Uh... Well, I don't. I don't think they've got a rematch yet because of this pandemic. But yeah, I'm sure they're going to want a rematch. I'm sure they're going to want their rematch. So, uh, is that something we could uh, expect down the road? Yes, most definitely. You know what? That match was so much fun, and I can't wait 
to get back in the ring with them because I know that they're itching for that. And man, this pandemic just sl- just slowed things down. Because honestly, if we if this happened if this ha- haven't happened, I'm sure we would have had our match by now. But trust me, shouts out to Empire. We will have that rematch, fellas. And also to the dirty uh dirty old vets. Yep. We were supposed to have our match as well. So trust me, fellas. We understand and we're gonna get to you for sure. All right, man. Cool, cool, man. Uh, so you've wrestled a lot of opponents. Uh, Michael Elgin. Uh, you've been in the ring with uh, Shane Taylor, Congo Kong, PCO. Do you have a favorite opponent that you've been in the ring with? PCO. PCO was one okay. was one of those uh, moments that he just <clears throat> he took me, and I feel like he just elevated me for sure. Yeah, I know that match on YouTube. I haven't got to see it yet, but uh, I, I will uh, definitely watch the match. I love the match against, um, like I said, Michael Elgin. Also, they have on um, Border City Wrestling a uh, match I was watching before, you against El Reverso. That was uh, that was another uh, really, really yes. good match. Yes, shouts out to El Reverso as well. That's another individual that, that's a Canadian favorite as well. Shouts out to him. Absolutely, man. Uh, so, so I mentioned favorite opponents. Are there any dream opponents that you have? Is there someone that that you hope to step in the ring with one day? Sammy Callahan is one. Uh, Willie Mack is another. Chris Swan. There's a lot. There's a lot. There's definitely a lot. The- I, would, I would say we mentioned the North earlier. So them, yep. Bear Fuji. Maybe Samoa Joe, maybe maybe uh, what about what about Tomohiro Ishii? That would be a crazy match. Tomohiro you against Tomohiro Ishii? Ishii? Amazing. That would be amazing. Oh my God! I mean, uh, do you think you could take those chops to the? I know Kamashi is he throws stiff chops, but uh, Ishii throws these just devastatingly stiff chops to the oh next man. Oh my God! The chops he was throwing to, to Moxley was oof. Oh my gosh, man. So, so before we wrap this up, last question: um, Where do you where do you see yourself in, say, about five years from now? Uh, five years, I see myself competing for the Impact Championship. Hopefully, okay. Either either competing or holding, or suplexing on another mountain. All right, there you go, man. Fair enough, man. Fair enough. So again, uh, before we wrap this up, is there anything uh, you want to plug? I think you know, I think I saw on Facebook uh, that you have a new um, uh, pro wrestling tea store. I, I'm not sure if it's new, but I know you have one, and uh, I know if you want to plug that or if you have any yeah, social yeah. media you want to plug, go feel free to plug on yeah. plug anything you want to plug. Actually, yes, I did. I uh, finally just have my pro wrestling tea shop, ladies and gentlemen. Please, if you can. Check out my pro wrestling uh, dot com cheese shop. Just type in Suplex Shogun Jackson Stone. You'll find me. Get my well, well, well t shirt. That all proceeds will be going to the Innocent Project and also the National Bailout Fund as well. Um, and also, if you can search me on Facebook, just type in Jackson Stone. Find me on Instagram at Jackson underscore Stone three one three or on Twitter at Jackson underscore Stone three one. There you go, man. Well, I, I just want to say, man, you are incredibly talented in the ring. You're, you're a fantastic talent. I know you're going to be a, a superstar of Impact Wrestling, and you're definitely going to hold the Impact Wrestling World Championship uh, one day. And uh, I, I can't wait for your debut, man. I can't wait for your debut. I'm so psyched about it. And uh, I, I just I hope it happens soon, man. I hope so, too. You know, until then, we'll just keep on getting sharper. So I appreciate okay. it, man. Yeah, my pleasure, man. Anytime you want to come back, man, you're always you're always welcome on the show, man. Will do, brother. Will do. All right, thanks a lot, man. So this has been Shooting Up North. I'm your host, Lewis Carlin. Again, I want to thank my guest, the Suplex Shogun, Jackson Stone. And until next time, thank you very much. Take care. Bye bye, and stay safe, everyone. So long. Bye bye.